Good morning, Central. Good morning. First, give it honor to God, Reverend Zell, other members of the pulpit, officers, members, and friends. Bow with me so we can ask for the Lord's presence during this special service today. Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. If I withdraw myself with thee, oh, well would I go. Father God, just thank you for another day on the face of the earth. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to lie down and watch over me last night. And you didn't have to do it, but you did. Thank you. Lord, we serve an awesome God. When he's so awesome, he's not only a deliverer, he's a comforter, he's a provider, he's a healer. And also he's our source of strength. And we need that source as we go in our daily life. Thank God that we serve a God that looks high but looks low. Lord, we love you for what all you've done for us. All we have to do is think about our life. And it had not been for the law on our side. Tell me what would we do? Lord, we want you to be that source of strength in our life. This particular service today, the 13th anniversary of the male chorus, where we're going to sing songs of Zion, because we all know that once praises go up, blessings will come down, and we need that today. Also, we have two members of the male chorus who have been faithful and dedicated over the years, Brother Leon and Brother Ozell. We ask you to touch them in a special way today. Now, Lord, we all want this world to turn around for us. This, this summer and everything, there's been a lot of conflict, a lot of death, a lot of racial problems and all that. But we know that you are the answer. Because you are an all-powerful God, you can, you are the strongest. Whenever there's fear in anything else, that's when you are at your best. Lord, throw your loving arms around our pastor and his family. Keep him on the path that you have for the vision of Central Baptist Church. Also, those of us who are struggling with one thing or another, sickness, job issues, bless them. Bless those in the prisons. Bless the mentally ill, the soldiers, the leaders of our church. We all need prayer. Because prayer is the answer. And Lord, when we have sung our last song, and we all know more, give us a home in your eternal kingdom where every day will be like Sunday and Christ will be at all. These and other blessings we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all those are under the sound of my voice say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Are you gonna bless him this morning? Bless his holy name. We can say the central, he has done great things. Yes, he has. Come on, Holy name. Holy name. Oh, oh, I don't know why. Good morning to Pastor Isaiah, Pulpit Associates, and to the members and friends. How many of you glad that he sacrificed his life for you? Come on, give him some praise this morning. But I do know because he loved me, because he cared for me, because he sacrificed his life, we can be healed, we can be delivered, we can be set free. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise in the house. He been too good to you to sit down on him. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He sacrificed his life for you and I. That's enough just to give him praise. Amen. Amen. Good morning to our Central Baptist Church family and to those viewing by internet. We would like to welcome you to a wonderful and awesome worship service. 
At this time, we're going to ask that our visitors stand and please remain standing. Amen. Send to give yourselves a hand. Please take note of the upcoming events. Congratulations to our male chorus as they celebrate their 13th anniversary today. Let's give them a hand. Our new members orientation class will be held today immediately following the 8 o'clock a.m. worship service in room 101. Our annual back to school prayer hour will be held on Wednesday August the 12th at 6 o'clock p.m. We are asking that our church family to assist us with our back-to-school supply drive. The supplies can be placed in the bins that are located in the vestibule and back rear entrance of the church. Your support will be greatly appreciated. Pastor's itinerary. He will preach today at Bell Memorial Baptist Church today at Bell Memorial Baptist Church, July 26 at 3 o'clock p.m. He's asking for the church family support. St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church in Echo, South Carolina, on Tuesday, July 28 at 7 o'clock p.m. PNBC, Dallas, Texas, Monday through Friday, August the 3rd through the 7th. Zion Pilgrim Baptist Church, Wednesday, August the 12th at 7 o'clock. PM. Please view our website for additional announcements by logging on to www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. Today's scripture will be coming from John 15, 17 through 20. Again, that's John 15, 17 through 20. Thought for the week. Let your life not be a wheelbarrow nor a wagon. So expect no one to pull or push you where you want to be. Let your prayer walk and your faith walk with God take you there. Thank you and have a blessed week. Good morning, Central. We greet you in the blessed name of God, our Father, Jesus, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our God. For the mighty God we serve. For the mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty God we serve. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, somebody tell me where would we be? You know, when you come to church, nobody really needs to prompt you to get you to praise God. Nobody really needs to boost you up in order to get you to praise God. Quite of the need to sing you happy in order to get you to praise God. All I need is a good memory for me to praise God because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. I thank the Lord for saving me. Oh, let's put your hands together. Let's open up your mouths over this place. And let's just have a hallelujah praise because the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on, praise him in here. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that he's worthy to be praised. Uh, I have a few praises over here toward the wall. Just can throw your hands up in the air and tell the Lord, thank you. I have a few praises right in this side that can throw your hands up and tell the Lord, thank you. I have a few praises right here that uh, stand right where you are and throw your hands up and tell the Lord, thank you. I have a few praises over here, all over the building. Let it saturate in the atmosphere. Just give God praise. Just, just give God glory. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Let's just praise him. Because he's worthy to be praised. Uh, keep standing. Keep standing. There's no time like lifting the offering when you praise him. Standing, keep standing. You're able to stand, stand and remain standing this time. Amen. I'll just open the door and check the lobby to make sure we're clear. Make sure there's nobody in the lobby. I don't want to leave anybody out doing such a wonderful opportunity to give. Amen. Amen. The Bible declares that we're faithful in giving our tithes and our offering. That the Lord would open up a window of heaven. 
and he will pour a blessing that we don't have warm enough to receive. Open up windows, plural. God has been too good to us for us not to give back to him. Amen, somebody. That job you have may not be the best job, but you ought to thank God that you're not in the unemployment line. And if you are laid off, you better thank God for an unemployment check. They rise all the time that God is still good. And if you reach age to your social security, you ought to thank God for allowing your golden years to roll on just a little bit longer. If you get that retirement check, you better praise God for a check coming in every month. Amen. And it's our opportunity to give back to God. The first 10% of what we make belongs to the Lord. Before you do anything else with your income, the first 10% belong to God. Take it off the top. Don't play games with it. Because let me tell you, you mess around and you spend it, you'll look around, you don't have nothing. Amen. Amen. Then I'm going to catch up next week and next week never come. Amen. Amen. Take it off the top and be fair. And when you give to God, when you're in tight time, God has a way of making a way for you. And there are some witnesses in this house this morning can testify that you can't be God giving no matter how hard you try. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity right now to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with. Truly, we know that you can't be God giving no matter how hard we try. The more we give to you, God, we know the more you will give back to us. The Bible declares that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And the Bible also reminds us, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, but he that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. We come giving with Jesus' joy. In the precious name of Jesus we pray, amen. Outside our face of all, inside our face each other, and you're in the competent, capable hands of our junior ushers, amen.
Thank you so much, choir, for that selection. We'll remind our church family today at 3 o'clock, we'll be traveling to the Bay of Memorial Baptist Church for an installation service for Pastor Christopher Goff. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. amen. We invite our church family to come and go with us and show your love and support for Reverend Goff as the transition in leadership at Bell takes place today where Pastor Butler, who's the founder of the church, who started the church, is passing the mantle on. In other words, Moses is passing the mantle on to a younger Yahshua. All right. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, and that's the way it ought to be done. Amen, somebody. You should not have to go through 30 different people are coming in and select the pastor. The seasoned leadership ought to bring a younger pastor in under their tutelage and guide them. Once Moses step aside, Joshua steps up. Amen. Amen. So come and join us today as we celebrate with Chris and celebrate with Bear Memorial for the transition of leadership that's going to take place. With all our officers, our church family, our uh, all united voices, our male chorus, and united voices mean all choirs coming together united. Amen, somebody. I, I still can't understand why choirs can't sing together, y'all. I, I haven't figured it out yet. I just can't understand that we can't sing together down here. How do we ever expect to be a part of the heavenly choir? Amen. Personality and attitudes won't change. Amen. But we're looking for a united front today as we go to Bear Memorial. Amen. I'm excited. Our annual back to school prayer hour on August the 12th at 6 p.m. I still believe that prayer works. I still believe our young people need to be covered with prayer before they go back to school. Not only are we praying for our young people, we're praying for our teachers, our administrators, our staff. There's that a time that we need to pray. We need to be praying right now. Amen. So I look forward to that moment when we cover our, 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 our young people, our teachers, our educators as they prepare to go back and work together. Amen. Now we have a back to school supply drive and you see on the program you have bins in the church in the front and the back. And I want those bins filled three, four times over. They're really small bins, so we ought to be able to fill them at any time. Amen, somebody. And, and, and the school supplies, you know what you need. They need paper, they need pencils, they need notebooks and stuff like that. If you are not able yourself to go out and get them, just make a donation toward it and somebody will shop for you. It's good to have your own personal shopper, isn't it? Somebody who would shop for you. After services, my wife would be in the vestibule. She's part of our youth advisory committee. And those of you who would like to make donations to her, make your donation. You're going to make out a check, make it out to the Central Baptist Church, and put up under that school supplies so you'll get credit for it. Amen. Uh, we went by the store and picked up close to 100 notebooks and tablets and all kind of stuff to donate it. And I'm also giving a check today for $100 to go toward the supplies. Amen. So we praise God much and mighty. And I have a few other people who said they're going to make donations in the back. I won't call any names. One person said, Rev, you make a $100 donation. I'm going to make 101 right. Amen, somebody. But I want them to know I don't like people out giving me. <laughs> Amen. So if I tell you it's going to be a hundred dollars, I get found a look over what's given, so I would increase mine to so go over what you say yours are going to be. I just want to send that notice out to somebody. I'm not calling any names, but I was on the phone with them and they told me that. So I want them to know I do have a change of pen so I can make an increase on my final amount. Amen. Let's bless our children as they go back to school. Every child does not have school supplies. And it's embarrassing when you're in school and you sit next to somebody and they have theirs and you don't have yours. Amen. It's not that the child doesn't want it. Economics is tough for the family to be able to do it. We must be the family. 
let's, let's get them with the supplies, uh, book back. We got bags. We're going to put the supplies in to do everything and make it special for our young people. And the bands will be in there for the next three weeks. And you can go online as well. And a list of the school supplies will be on there. Thank you so much for your time and the effort. Amen. We thank Reverend Winslow Harrison for presiding for us this morning. We thank God for the presence of Reverend Kenneth Wilson. And we thank you for your prayers on last week as Cook and I traveled to Ocho Rios to celebrate our 31st wedding anniversary. Amen. Amen. While we were there, we stayed in a resort called the Butler Village where they assign you your own private butler. That butler waits on you night and day, irons your clothes, wash your clothes, bring your food to your bed, make all your hotel a reservation. If you think of it, the butler has done it. Amen, somebody. For our anniversary, we get there, they got this big bouquet of flowers sitting there. They got rose petals going from the bed all the way to the shower. Now, I, I was going to do stuff like that, but they beat me to it, y'all, so... They didn't give me an opportunity to do it, but I, I, I was going to, that's just the way I would have done it. Uh, I would have planned it just like that, had in the bathtub red roses shaped with the word love in the middle of it. They just had it all worked out, amen. They come pick you up and take you to every eating place. You didn't have to do anything. So we got ready to leave. So Cook said, Ricky, can we take the butler with us? I said, no, we got to lead a butler here. She said, well, you better learn to be a butler. <laughs> but amen. So we thank you for your prayers. But even in Ocho Rios, we were watching the service. That's a bit of streaming video. Amen. So we praise God for each of you, and we thank God so much for your prayers. Amen. Uh, let's take this time to welcome, to give up God appreciation applause for our male chorus as they celebrate their anniversary on today. Amen. Their 13th anniversary on the day. Let's give God praise for our male chorus. Amen, somebody. You ever heard of a renaissance man? Anybody ever heard of a renaissance man? That's man who can do it all. Amen. And we're blessed to have in our midst of us a renaissance man. Amen, somebody. You know, I, I don't spend a bunch of time on Facebook, but every now and then when I'm going somewhere else, I might stop by. And I read the description of a Renaissance man that just brought joy to my heart. I said, this man is a mechanic. He's a plumber. He's an electrician. Best father in the world. Best husband in the world. I started reading about this Renaissance man. I said, I wish I could meet him, Ralph. I wish I knew somebody like that. Then at the bottom of it, they had from Deaconess Glendale Well talking about her husband, Deacon Cartrell Well, just a renaissance man back there. <laughs> I praise God for a renaissance. That's what I called him on the phone a minute ago, Deaconess Well, to tell him, I said, you're a renaissance man. It's just an honor to meet you and know you, brother, to have you here at the Central Baptist Church, man. I think whenever your wife can speak that highly of you, man. It speaks volumes about the way that she feels about you. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Highest compliment I got was I'm going to make you a buck. <laughs> I didn't get all that other stuff called trio guy, but it's such a job. When so many marriages are being ripped and stripped and torn apart, so many marriages winding up in the divorce court, and find a couple that really enjoy one another. I think it's an absolute joy. And we need to celebrate moments like that, you know, because there's so many things that are going wrong with it. Thinking this West, thank you for that. I thought that was awesome. We praise God much and mighty. Let us stand as we prepare for the reading of our scripture. As Deacon Ronnie Taylor will lead us in the reading of our scripture, followed by a selection by the male chorus. Then I will return with the preach word entitled, You Can't Please Everybody. Good morning, Central. I'll be reading John 15, 17 through 20. These things I command you.
that you love. <laughs> These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Thus I read chapter 15, John chapter 15, verses 17 through 20. May God add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his word.
Junior ushers who are ushering today doing a wonderful job. Amen. 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 Kathy Vernon, thank all of y'all for working with our junior ushers. Amen. There are almost 40 junior ushers now. Amen, somebody. We praise God for our junior ushers. Amen. Amen. And let me thank Deacon Ronnie Taylor for leading us in the reading of our scripture on today. From the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 17 through 20. Amen. I was saying to Deacon Taylor when he was looking down for us to get your help, run and get your help. Amen. And I was looking for mine a minute ago and can't find them. You need your help. You need your help. But the Gospel of John, chapter 15, and I want to focus in on verse 18 and 19. Verse 18 and 19 say, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. And verse 19 goes on to say, If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Let's look at the way Eugene Peterson translate those in the Message Bible. Eugene Peterson said, if you find that God's world is hating you, remember it got its start hating me. He went on to say that uh, if you live on the world's term, the world will love you as one of its own. But since I pick you to live on God's term and no longer on the world's term, the world is going to hate you. I want to put a tag in this sermon thought today that you cannot please everybody. Can I, can I say that again? 
I don't care what you do, you cannot please everybody. Amen? Two teams gather together to pray at the beginning of the game. Both teams are praying for victory, but only one team will win. In football, every now and then you have a tie. Basketball and others, extra inning and overtime, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. Because guess what? You cannot please everybody. Ah, my brothers and sisters, I want to share a secret with you today. I want to let you know that after 50-something years of living, 30 years of being in business, and almost 20 years of pastoring, I have learned that you cannot please everybody. I am convinced that if Jesus Christ came down from glory on today, there are some folks he would not be able to please. Oh, I wish I had a prayer church in here. Now, believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, we all have a, have a great affirmation to be like. I don't know too many people that go around there and say, I don't want nobody to like me. I don't want nobody to have anything good to say about me. We all have an infinity for people to like us, feel good about us, and say good things about us. But I want you to know in the midst of all of that, no matter what you say, if somebody does not like you, there's not a whole lot you're going to do to change their minds about you. Can I help somebody in here today? Don't spend a bunch of your time, your energy, and your effort trying to get somebody who you know don't like you in order to like you. Uh, what they will do, they will front with you. They will tolerate you. They'll, they'll perpetrate with you. They'll, they'll put up with you to get out of you what they need to get out of you. But if they really don't like you, there, there's not a whole lot that you can do about somebody that does not like you. Now, see, so you got to realize that, that, that if you can count the number of friends you have on one hand, you are a blessed person. Can I say that again? Uh, uh, you, can, you, you can count some people walk around talking about, I got a, a thousand Facebook friends. You got followers. That's the difference between a follower and a friend. Uh, see, see, if you could count your friends on one hand, you are a blessed person. So I learned that friends will stay with you even when you're wrong. Uh, you don't need friends just to be with you when you're right. But I need friends that'll stay with me when I'm wrong, that'll help me get right. Uh, see, there's a difference between a friend and an enemy. See, an enemy will try to hurt you, but a friend will be there for you even when you fall way down. Uh, everybody needs some good friends. Uh, you need some good friends and uh, some who say I'll be with you when it's thick and thin. When things become thick, uh, they will become thin. But everybody need a good friend to be there with them. But, but I'm glad that I learned a long time ago that if I don't have anybody else that will stand with me, that the Bible reminds me that I have a friend that will stick closer than a brother. That I have a witness in here. Is there anybody testimony here this morning that Jesus is a friend of mine? I, I wish I had a witness in here that I could call on him early in the morning. I could call on him at noonday. I could call on him late in the evening. And I could call on him in the midnight hour. How many of you know that he'll hear your cry? He'll answer your by and by. Even in the midnight hour that Jesus is a friend of mine. Oh, that's good news there. He's a friend of mine. That's good news. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad about it. I'm glad that he looked beyond my fault. And I'm glad that he supplied all of my needs. Uh, I can't please everybody, but I'm, I'm not out to try to please everybody. I, I just want to make sure my Lord and Savior is pleased with me. So when I come to the end of the journey, I want to hear him say, well done. My good and faithful servant, I want to hear him saying you fought a good fight. 
I want to hear him saying you finished the course. I want to hear him saying you kept the faith. But I'm glad that he is my friend. Uh, and because he's my friend, no matter what I have to go through, I know I'm not dealing with it by myself. Uh, how many of you know I don't have to wait to come out of anything? Because he's my friend that he's right there with me. And I can praise him while I'm going through. I, I don't have to wait to praise him when I get ready to come out. There's somebody here early this morning. You're in the midst of going through something. Let me give you a suggestion. Don't wait till you come out in order to start calling on the name of the Lord. But in the midst of what you're going through, start calling on the name of the Lord right now. Is there anybody here that can call on his name? Is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Is there anybody here that love my Savior? Is there anybody here that loves my Lord? I dare you to call on him while you're going through. And when you come out, you ought to come out with praise in your mouth. You ought to come out with face giving on your lip. Is there anybody here that loves to praise him? Is there anybody here that loves to call his name? Is there anybody here that knows he's able to do anything but fail? Now, I want you to know that you cannot please everybody. Uh, people have their own agenda, and you just got to make sure that you're pleasing the Lord. Hmm. Why this. If you share with somebody what the Lord has done for you, and if they don't have the right spirit about themselves, they would consider you bragging. about what you have and if you don't say anything to them you're stuck up and you think you're better than everybody can I tell you you can't please everybody if you share with someone a car that you have, a house that you move in, or a promotion that you have, or how well your children are doing then that leaves that you brag but let me help you with your bragging right here. Tell them, yes, I am bragging, but I'm bragging on how great my God is. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. So when you share with somebody about your car, tell them the Lord gave it to me. When you share about your house, tell them the Lord blessed me with it. When you share about your job, say the Lord bless me with that. So when you share with somebody, always make sure that you give credit to the Lord so they can never accuse you of bragging on yourself. But I'm bragging on my God. I'm bragging on how awesome God is. I, I'm bragging on what the Lord has done for me. You can't please everybody. If you come to church and get your praise on, you're showing off. And it don't take all of that. You get up praising God and doing your dance and nodding your head and doing everything. Uh, I don't know what they're going through. But it don't take all of that. They, they just want to be seen. Tell them it may not take all of that for you. But you don't know what I had to go through in order to get here. <laughs> just come back and, and walk with me last week, God. Uh, I could have lost my mind. Come walk with me last week. I, I could have hurt somebody. I, come walk with me last week. Because the way you rolled up on me last week, if I hadn't been... Oh, uh, you can't please everybody. Hmm. Uh, if you and then folks try to make you feel guilty because if you don't praise him like they want you to praise him then they start saying silly stuff you sitting there like a knot on the law like the law has never done anything for you one preacher was berating the congregation and he said that y'all sitting there I'm preaching my heart out y'all sitting there ain't saying nothing Old lady jumped up and said, if you say something, we'll say something. <laughs> if you say something, then we'll say something. See, just because I don't praise him like you praise him, 
you don't have a moratorium on praise. I may not dance, but that don't mean I ain't praising him. I may not shout, but that doesn't mean I'm not praising him. My hands may not go up, but that don't mean I'm not praising him. So I got my own way of praising him. I, I respect your shout, but if I don't shout, respect the fact that I'm still praising him and that I'm worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. I, I think we ought to have a little bit of everything in the church. I, somebody ought to be waving their hands and somebody ought to be nodding their head and somebody ought to be patting their feet and every now and then tears ought to flow out somebody's eyes, but nobody has a right to tell anybody else how to praise him. If you don't tell me how to praise him because you weren't there, you don't know when and you don't know where, you don't know where the Lord has brought me from. Ah, you can't please everybody. If you're a singer and sit and talk with a man after service for over five minutes, you got to be going with him. You got to be. That's the only reason it was five minutes. You got to be. And if you're a woman talking to another woman, and a man talking to another man, Something has to be wrong. But let me tell you, you can't please everybody. They don't know what the conversation is about. They don't have, know how that person may be comforting you. What they're doing is, as the young folks used to say, they're, 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 they're all in your Kool-Aid. And they don't even know your flavor. But tell them, don't you worry about my flavor because I have something you might not know about what. I have favor with my flavor. Oh, uh, you can't please everybody. That loud shout out from the back was from Ronnie. Y'all know he's single. So when I said single, he shouted loud back there. <laughs> I stopped by to tell you, don't worry about pleasing everybody. Just make sure that you're pleasing the Lord. In our text on the day, Jesus warned about a world of hate. My brothers and sisters, we're living in a mean, unfriendly world. And sometimes we have to deal with mean, unfriendly people. He begins in the early part of chapter 15 by reminding us that Christ is divine and that God is a husband who cares for the branches to make them fruitful. The branches are all, my brothers and sisters, those who claim to be believers of Christ. Jesus says that he is the main vine of the plant while he produces smaller branches. A, flower who takes, a, a farmer who takes care of a fruit-bearing vine needs to trim away the pruning. Every now and then, you got to do some pruning of the old branches in order for new branches to come forth and give fruit. Only those branches that stay connected to the vine can produce fruit. And 15 and 7, he said, if you abide in me, my word abide in you, then ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. Oh, that's good news, my brothers and sisters. Herein is my Father glorified, that you must be fruit of the vine, that you may bear just like the disciples, that we ought to have a personal relationship. Because he said, I call you out of the world. Because I call you out of the world, I, know, I want you to know that the world is going to hate you. As long as you're in the world, the world loves you. But when the Lord calls you out of the world, the world will hate you because the world does not love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm amazed how people lead their lives sometimes. When the Lord changes their life, the closest people around them cannot be happy for them because they still remember when and what they used to do. But I'm glad that the word reminds us that if any man be in Christ, that he is a new creature, that old things have passed away, that all things have become new. You would think that the folks who saw your struggle, you would think that the folks who knew you when you were going through, they ought to be able to celebrate your new life in Christ and ought to be able to rejoice every now and then and thank God for where the Lord has brought you from. 
But I'm amazed at how some folks uh, tell you that, yeah, you're different now. Yeah, you think you're better than somebody. Tell them I'm not better, but I'm not worse. Uh, tell them that I found a man that has given me a new lease on life. And when you have a new lease on life, uh, it'll put joy in your heart. And I, I believe I got a witness in here. I'm glad that I'm not how I used to be. Is that anybody testimony? I'm glad that the Lord has saved me, that the Lord has redeemed me, that the Lord has set me free. Is there anybody here that's glad for the new life that you have? Is there anybody here that's glad that the Lord has called you out of darkness and to the marvelous life? Somebody testimony is that look where he brought me from. I need a few folks in here just to have a flashback now about some of the stuff you used to do and some of the places you used to go and some of the conversations you used to have but somebody ought to be glad about it today that the Lord is in the reclaiming business he called us out of the world anybody glad that he called you out I wish I had a praise in here I'm so glad that the Lord has saved me I'm glad that the Lord has redeemed me can anybody just throw their hands up and say thank you Jesus just say thank you Jesus somebody don't know what you're thanking him for tell him that ain't your business but say thank you Jesus I want you to think on your mind about something you used to do that you don't do anymore and shout thank you Jesus I want you to think a minute for some places you used to go that you don't go anymore and shout thank you Jesus I want to think about some folks you used to hang with that you had to let go holla thank you Jesus I want you to think about some stuff you used to drink that you don't drink no more and shout thank you Jesus all over this place somebody just shout somebody just scream somebody just open their mouth and say thank you every now and then you just gotta pause and say thank you Jesus well, you can't please everybody, but our text, there are three insights we were given. First of all, we were given a commandment. That's in verse 17. We were given a commandment. And the commandment reminds us to love ye one another. These things the Lord shall command you. Love ye one another. We're not talking about emotion. We're not talking about feeling, but the Lord clearly reminds us as believers to love ye one another. How can you say that you love God whom you have never seen but can't get along with your brothers and sisters who you see every day? The Bible tells us that God is love. And he that loveth not knows not God. So it doesn't matter how dressed up you are. It doesn't matter how well you know the Bible. It doesn't well how you wear Baptist policy, doctrine, and all that. If you don't have love in your heart for your fellow individual around you, then you don't know God. I'm not saying you don't know of God. I don't, I'm not saying you don't know about God. Of and about in the center structure of preposition and preposition connects you to the noun. But you don't know him directly for yourself if you don't have love in your heart for everybody. If someone is upset with you and if you're upset with somebody, the Bible says you ought to go to that person. Not go to somebody else who don't like them. Huh? Because see, that then you form an a holy alliance. So here's what happened. You're upset with that person. You don't like that person. So what you do is you go with, get somebody else who don't like that person. Now the two of y'all don't like each other. Y'all don't like each other. Y'all really don't deal with each other. But you will come together against somebody that both of y'all don't like. 
Huh? But the Bible says you ought to go to someone that you have a difference with for the challenge of restoring that person. It's clear that we got to love one another. And if someone is upset with you, that's their problem. It's not your problem. Here's what I found that someone is upset with someone, Dr. Pat Grimberg, is that there are some deeper issues that that person themselves are going through and they need to use you to work out their projective issues they're dealing with. It's not that they're mad with you. It's not that they don't like them, you. Most of the time, people don't like themselves. There are some issues in their life that they have not worked out yet. They need you so they can work out some of that stuff on you. But the commandment is we're to love one another. Oh, that's good news there. And one of the challenges we face is that we look at the word love and we're thinking of it from a different standpoint. Love here is not speaking of eros, which is romantic love. They are not talking about that type of love. Love here is not speaking of storage, that's family love. They are not talking about that kind of love. Love here is not filio or phileo or brotherly love. They're talking about agape love, unconditional love. That I love you because God loved me. And because some of God is in me. There's nothing that you can do that prevents me from loving you. Commandment is love ye one another. And that's why folks can't understand how you can love them when they've done something to you. How you can love them when they try to hurt you. How you can love them when they talk about it. Tell them how, it's not it's not arrows, it's not romantic love, it's unconditional love. Uh, the Bible reminds us that we ought, to, we, ought, we ought to love one another. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them that despitefully use you. Oh, it takes a lot in order to do that. Deuteronomy 6 and 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy body, and all thy soul. John 4 and 7 said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is God. Ah, uh, that's good news right there. Yes, when you love somebody, love has a way of transforming things. Love transforms our, our, our chaos into our comfort. Love transforms our defeats into our delight, our trouble into our triumph, our dark nights into our bright day. Love will transform a house into a home, grief into glory burden in the blessing. Oh, we got to learn to love one another. That's the commandment that we're given in our text, that we love one another. Oh, that's good news, my brothers and sisters, that we got to learn how to love. So it doesn't matter that you can't please everybody, but if you learn to love the Lord, and you learn to love the Lord with all your heart, then you can please God even when you're not trying to please everybody. I've learned as long as I got love in my heart, I can work with anybody. I can serve with anybody. You can sing with anybody. You can pray with anybody. You can be there for anybody. If you got love in your heart, what the world needs now is we need more love in our heart for our brothers and our sisters. We need no more love in the church house for our brothers and our sisters. We need no love on our ministry for our brothers and our sisters. What we need is more love in our heart for everybody. Uh, you can't please everybody, but the Lord told me to tell you keep love in your heart. That's a commandment. Secondly, the Lord want to remind you on the day that you are chosen. Ah, uh, yeah. You got a commandment to love one another. Then you're chosen. It's hard now to go on a job and show love towards somebody who's nasty and difficult to work with. But you got to do it. You can't get on that level, y'all. That blocks your blessing. You got to rise above the level. Remember I told you one time is that if you go down the street sometime and, and a car is down in a ditch and you see the wrecker, uh, the tow truck, like Main Street, Tow. And if you see that tow truck, the tow truck is sitting on the side of the road. The car is down in the ditch. The tow truck takes the level and lets it down and pulls the car up. The truck doesn't get in the ditch with the car. Huh? 
You don't have to get in, in the ditch with folk. You don't have to treat them the way they treat you. You know, somebody made you mad. I can't wait to get to work. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't waste your energy. Don't waste your time. Leave it alone. Why are you confront, confronting somebody who you said lied on you? They ain't going to admit they lied. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your energy. Let it go. Leave it alone. Put it in God's hand. And trust that God will make a way. Because you are chosen. Lord said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. I want you to know you're chosen. Ah, that's good news to know the Lord has called you out of this world. The world, the world's gonna hate you, cause God has called you out. Ah, uh, uh, when you talk about hating, yeah, you, you, when you're preparing a text and preparing a message, sometimes you get revelation from all kind of sources. I never would have thought, after twelve years of high school, four years of undergrad school. Three more years of one master's, three more years of another master's, three years in the doctoral program, that my, one of my points of emphasis would come from Ulysses Reed. <laughs> Ulysses sent me a text the other day. And, and I, when I looked at the text, I said, that, Ulysses got something right here. Because when the Bible said, the Lord said that they would hate you, then I started looking at the word hater. And this is what Ulysses sent to me. Flip it up there, country I'm from. He said, haters are having anger toward everyone reaching success. That's the definition of a hater. H-A-T-E-R-S, having anger toward everyone reaching success. Let me say it again. Having anger toward everyone reaching success. The reason people hate on you because they're mad and upset with you because you reached a level of success that they never achieved themselves. If you didn't do anything, they would never hate on you. If you never accomplished anything, they would never talk about you. But all haters want to do is try to bring you down and try to tear you down because what the Lord has done for you. But you better tell your haters that what God has for me, that it is for me and nothing I a hater can do can break me down for what God has done for me. Have an anger toward everyone that's reaching success. Uh, people don't hate on you unless you're doing something. And so I've learned that because you have been chosen, God has a purpose for your life. And I stop to tell everybody up under my voice that you are chosen. I don't care where you are right now. You may not feel like you're headed there, but I want you to know you are chosen. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard for you right now. You're hurting right now, but don't you dare give up on yourself, and don't you dare give up on God because I stopped by to tell you that you are chosen. And because you are chosen, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. So when people look at you, tell them, you see me in the now, but God sees me in the future. And I stopped by to tell you, your future looks so much brighter. Do I have a witness in here? Tell them I may be going through right now, but I'm going through, but I'm getting ready to come out. I'm getting ready to come out because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm getting ready to come out because of God before me. He's more than the world is against me. Do I have anybody here? that feel a change is about to come in your life. Do I have anybody here that's been praying and fasting for a long time? But I stopped by to tell you that your blessing is on the way. Somebody here ought to know that God got a blessing that is coming through for you. Is there anybody testimony here that you've been waiting for a while and you got a feeling that things are about to get better? I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad about it. I'm glad that I have been chosen. I'm glad that God looked at me, plucked me out of his garden. I'm glad that I was mixed up and messed up, but God can still use me. Is there anybody testimony here that the Lord can still use you? That's enough for me to celebrate right there. That's enough for me to give him the praise. That's enough for me to give him the glory. 
I believe I got a few witnesses in here. I see hands coming together. I see heads bobbing right now. Because you're thinking about how good the Lord has been for you. And you're getting ready to praise him from whom all your blessings come from. Well, I'm getting ready to press to the close right now. I want to remind you that you can't please everybody. I'm getting ready to press to the close right now. I want to remind you that God has given you a commandment that we're to love one another. Is there anybody here that's made up in their mind that I'm going to love my brothers and my sister? Tell them you can talk about me as much as you please. But the more you talk, I'm going down. I'm said I'm going down on my bending knees. Do I, do I have a witness in here? I feel that God is still moving and that God is moving in this place uh, that the Lord is moving in this house uh, I'm going to love you no matter how you treat me my mama used to tell me if you don't have anything good to say about somebody y'all not to say nothing at all but we are our brother's keeper then I want you to know that you have been chosen you've been chosen that God has called you out of this world you're in this world but you're not of the world I'm glad that he called me out I'm glad, Sister Ruth, that I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind. Do I have a witness in here? And third and final, as I get ready to press toward the close, I want you to know that you can please, you don't have to please everybody, but the comforter will come. That's what the text said. The text said that the comforter will come. How many of you know it's good to have the comforter that's present in your life? I'm talking about the company keeping power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know it's good to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes, I know my brothers and sisters the commandment. Yes, I know that I have been chosen, but I'm glad that I know that the comforter will come. Oh, the word of God says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'll provide you with another comforter. Yes, I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm Holy Ghost filled and I'm fire baptized and I got Jesus on my side and the comforter will come. The day that the Lord saved you, he filled you with his Holy Ghost. Yes, the songwriter said that I'm trying to do my best in service, trying to live the best I can when I choose to do the right thing. That evil is present on every hand, off the misunderstanding, out of all the good I do. I go to my friends and loved ones, and I find them complaining to them. But somebody ought to know with the Holy Spirit that the Lord will, he'll make a way somehow. Proverbs 16 and 17 says, uh, when a man ways please God, he'll make his enemies behave. Uh, that's enough to shout about there. That's enough to get me happy right there. I don't know about you, but I made up in my mind. I'm not trying to please everybody here, but I want to make sure that God is pleased with me. Is there anybody here that want to make sure that the Lord is pleased with them? Well, as I get ready to close right now, I want to remind you of a brief story that I want you to hear as I get ready to take my seat. Well, back in 1988, there was a father and his son by the last name of Redmond that they qualified for the Olympic for 1992. Well, it said that in 88, when they qualified first time, that when he was running the lap, that he pulled his hamstring, and he tore his hamstring, and he could not participate in the Olympic. Uh, but four years later, it said that he entered back in after four years of rehabilitation, after four years of working out, after four years of fasting, doing everything that he needed to do. He got in the 1992 Olympic, and just as they was getting ready to warm up, just as they were running in the race, he was rounding the thing and he pulled his left hamstring. First time he pulled his right, this time he pulled his left hamstring, and he fell down to the ground while the race was going on. All he wanted to do was get to the finish line, but he couldn't make it to the finish line. Do I have a praying church in hell? He was struggling to make it to the finish line. Have you ever been close in life? You almost have. And 
and you were struggling to make it to the finish line. Have you ever been closed and looked like your blessing was right around the corner, but it was hard to make it to the finish line? Well, he needed somebody that he could lean on at the finish line. He looked over in his coach. Uh, he could not lean on the coach, and the coach did not come out there. He looked over for the trainer, and the trainer did not help him. He looked for one of his teammates, and the teammates did not help him. But oh my God, he looked up in the stand, and here comes his father. His father came down out of the stand. His father ran out on the track. His father picked his son up, leaned his son on his shoulder. His son was hobbling on one leg. Daddy was pulling him with the other leg. Everybody was passing him by. But the son crossed the finish line anyhow. The reason the son crossed the finish line, he had a father that he could lean on. To have a witness here. I stopped by to tell somebody, you don't have to please everybody, but you got a father that you can lean on. Oh, what a joy divine. I'm leaning on his everlasting arm. If you know that you can lean on him, give him praise in here. If you know that he'll pick you up, give him praise in here. If you know that he'll turn you around, give him praise in here. Is there anybody here that can lean on the Lord? Is there anybody here? No, he'll never let you down. Is there anybody here? No, he'll never let you fall. Throw your hands up. So I'm leaning. I'm leaning. I'm leaning on this heart. Put your hands together and give God praise all over this building. Is there anybody here that want to please God? Just give him praise. Just give him glory. He's worthy. You can't please everybody. But if your heart is right, make sure you please God. Can I tell you, if you please God, he'll work everything else out for you. That battle you're trying to deal with, if God is pleased with you, he'll fight your battle. Spend your time pleasing God. I have been to too many funerals, home going service late. And the older I get, the more I realize our steps are getting shorter. I don't have time to be mad with folks. I may get disappointed, but I have what you call a quick recovery period. I don't linger, y'all. Too much to do. People are dying. People are getting shot. Car accident. All kind of stuff is going on. My focus now is just to please God. If I please God, that'll please my family. When you please God, he takes care of everything else that's going on around you. Please him by obeying his commandment, love one another. That's major there. Love one another. Sometimes people in the world and on the street treat you better than people in the church. Ain't no hurt like church hurt, y'all. Huh? I said years ago, the church is the only place where I know the wounded get shot. It's supposed to be the hospital where the wounded gets healed. We pump another shot and pump, you keep pumping. He falling down, we shoot him in one leg, fall down, shoot him in another leg. Only place that the wounded gets shot. The church ought to be a healing station. Well, when you come in here, you ought to know you can get healed. If you need help, you ought to be able to get it here. This ought not to be the coldest place around. Love, if the love is in our heart, God will transform us and change our heart. Church ought to be a place where people got attitudes. Dr. Jekyll and Hyde speak one Sunday. Don't want nobody to say nothing to them the next week. We can't figure your personality out that much. But if you got love in your heart, regardless of what I'm going through myself, the love of Jesus is going to radiate. 
as I minister to those around me. They know who you are. You are chosen. Don't you answer to any name that people call you. You ain't nobody be. You hear me? You ain't nobody dub you. Do you hear me? You ain't nobody chick on the side. Know who you are. Know whose you are. Brothers, you ain't nobody sugar daddy. You ain't nobody player getting played. Know who you are. And know when your season is. Huh? I shouldn't be dressing in my 50s like I dressed in my 20s. season no matter how you try it ain't gonna fit things have shifted oh I know I'm telling the truth and things are shifted amen somebody I had a senior one time I went to see she said pastor she's going on to be with the Lord she said that's a nice suit nice shirt you got on Look like you lost some weight, Pastor. I felt good, and she smiled, and she laughed. She said, well, I got so much to tell you, Pastor. I said, what's that? She said, look like you found it again. <laughs> it is what it is, y'all. Amen? When I came to Central, I had a medium-sized afro. Reverend Wilson, OZ said he is what it is. Amen, somebody. I used to run up these steps. Now I hold on to everything that's close by. I'm really thinking about putting much a rail on each side right now. Things have a way of changing. But remember, you have been chosen. And because you're chosen, you have the comforter. You have the presence of the Holy Spirit within you that allows you to work with, to serve with, to get along with even difficult people. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit is within you that will break down walls and break down barriers. Let us stand. There may be someone up under the sound of my voice today. Maybe during the course of this week or during the course of your life, you've been challenged in trying to please people. But you made up your mind that all you want to do is to please God. If you please God, everything else will fall into place. And sometime in order to please God, there must be a separation or pruning process where God is getting ready to take somebody in here. Everybody cannot go with you. Amen. Everybody's not ready for what God is getting ready to do to you and through you. But if you please God, nobody can block you and nobody can stop you. And when the Holy Spirit is working on the inside, the Holy Spirit will show up and you on the outside. You may come today by letter, by your Christian experience, or a candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God, whosoever will. Let them come. The door of the church is open as a choir leads us. Will you come today? We will receive you. While on others.
Just do not. Everybody, I'm singing. Oh, Savior. Will you come today here? While on others, just do not. It's prayer time at the altar. It's prayer time at the altar. 